And this is our real thoughts on a cinematic classic, uh, Inspector Gadget. Um, <laughs> Wowzers. Well, the nice thing is we can talk about this movie and we can also talk about the show because the show... Fucking amazing. It's not like it was a huge hit or anything like that, but we all knew about it and we all kind of liked watching it. It had a definite formula to it. That's back when just every kid's show had a formula and you just run through it. But it was a nice formula. Um... And for those who don't know, Inspector Gadget, the show from the 80s, had, uh, get smart, what's his name? Don Adams, I think? Uh, Would you believe Don Adams? Yeah, Don Adams. And uh, he did the voices, Inspector Gadget, who is half man, half robot. Uh, I don't know if they ever really go into the backstory, he just kind of is. I know there was an inventor at some point, but you don't really know. So anyway, he, he's his I half man, I don't know if they ever went into it, because I think I saw the pilot episode once, and... <clears throat> I don't think they ever explained it, and not only that, but I think Gadget had a mustache. Yeah, no, that's when he was, uh, they're going for Clisteau, or Cl the Pink Panther. Uh, they Spectre wanted Clisteau. Clisteau. Yeah. Um, but, so yeah, so he's this, uh, he's this cop who has, like, he has a niece, of course, it can't be daughter, because, like, all these cartoons would be like, oh, a bad parent, but for some reason the uncle constantly putting their kids Bumbling in uncles is. are okay. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're still doing it with Gravity Falls and all this stuff, so it's really funny. Um, but, yeah, so we... Uh, and the daughter's named Penny, and uh, he has a dog named Brain, and uh, they go around, they're solving mysteries, they're trying to stop this evil uh, man called Dr. Claw, who you never see, and he, Gadget never does anything. He's, even though it's called Inspector Gadget, he never actually achieves anything. He's always off doing something stupid, thinking he's getting closer to the case when really it's his niece who's solving all the problems with this phenomenal computer book. Yes, Pretty the, much the really, first, you know, <laughs> iPad. <laughs> iPad <laughs> makes the iPad look like a clay tablet. Yeah, like I mean, she can open metal doors and everything with like just pushing a couple of these buttons, this incredible computer book. Where the book. fuck did she get that thing? I don't know. I, <laughs> she has an uncle who's half man, half robot. Why, why wouldn't she have this thing? Um, and she never ever takes the show. The show really should have been called Penny Gadget. Yeah. But, you well, know. but but that's and that's part of why I really liked the show because you know you watch it again with your dolls like okay little kid show like whatever it's not especially funny or anything and it's animated decent enough it, but you know it's whatever. But something I really respected about that show is I really respected how humble that character was, how humble Penny was, and that she never took the credit. She was just happy that justice was done, and she could get. Okay. More okay. done with. We know. Them we knowing. know why this is, though. How many cases has she fucked up? I'm sure there are a couple where people died, and she's like, well, <laughs> "Not on me." <laughs> the cat, my it. uncle, <laughs> asshole uncle, he's the one that did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh wow. Nothing to do with it. No, we're talking about that. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. So that was the formula of this show. It was always Dr. Claw, who was the bad guy. There was always these colorful, weird I'll henchmen. I'll next time, um, Gadget. <laughs> and for a show that relied on this formula, it was a good formula. It was... It, it, it's a kid empowerment show. It is. It was all about the, the kid wields all the power. She's... Obviously a super genius and has a computer book that maybe she invented it herself. Who knows? Be, yeah. Oh, she had the little watch too, right? Had like a laser yeah, on the, it the, and stuff? The, yeah, she had the, the little Dick Tracy watch with like lasers and what the... How? <laughs> <laughs> when I, I say it out loud, it starts not making any sense. But, <laughs> but you have a talking dog too. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just a, a um, kid show. But yeah, so it was, a, it was a kid empowerment show. It was all about the, the kid really secretly saving the day. And this is a time never, when you, there never were no the good credit. kid characters in um, cartoons, 80s shows. There were very few good kid characters. No, They're it's true. Definitely not, not, they always I, had the catchphrases. Yeah, and definitely not kids that were basically the, the hero. Yeah. But like, not the title uh, hero either, which is just, it's... I'm realizing now as I'm saying it out loud, this really was a good formula it was for this a, show. It was, so, and it's such a strange show because if you went, think if you went to pitch this, okay, we're gonna do a kid show. Okay, it's about a kid that secretly solves all of these mysteries. Okay, but she never gets the credit. That's weird. And the show's gonna be named after her uncle. Okay, who's a bumbling idiot who doesn't really solve the cases himself. That's weird. But but it's half man, half robot. Wait, we're not making the half man, half robot cool? No, it's the little kid in her computer book. And, and her dog, who, yeah. who also seems and little dog really too. sentient and you know, <laughs> super smart. And, so, and, so yeah, so, so there's this show. It's not like, you know, perfect or anything, but for a kid show that relied on formulas in the 80s and stuff, it, it was pretty solid for a kid show. Um, so then this movie comes out years later, 
clearly just to try to tap the nostalgia market because this is back when people didn't realize just how big this whole nostalgia thing was going to be and that people are still making a living <laughs> at this kind of stuff. So this movie comes along and clearly it's like, okay, there's this show, but we got to do what every other movie is doing because the chart says and focus groups and stuff if like that. If you would that, just look at the chart, to a point the where, chart is where it's at. To a point where it becomes unrecognizable to the original source material. Uh, to the choices of the people, to where the story goes, to how the characters are. I mean, everything, it's completely unrecognizable. If, if you didn't put him, like, in the hat and coat, and, you know, uh, literally the only connection would be that he can do some of the things Gadget can do, but outside of that, would you ever connect this to an Inspector Gadget cartoon? No. It's like, no, it's like I will never say would. it's inspired casting to have Matthew Broderick play a bumbling idiot, yes. so. <laughs> and to... to just so I make it clear, because we take a lot of shots at Matthew Broderick, we have never met the guy. He could be a total sweetheart. We don't know. Um, but I can't stand his acting. I'm sorry. I really try. That's I try of, so that's a lot hard. Of fish. I'm pretty sure he wants us dead. That may, that may explain the ninja in our house. <laughs> hey, he's been very quiet, okay? He's lurking in the shadows very nicely. I've been attacked twice in the past week, and I'm pretty sure it's Broderick right here. <laughs> Broderick was a secret ninja this whole time. It's like, my, you know, I was trying to parade as a good actor. Well, <laughs> that was your one flaw. You weren't very good. No, um, I, even the moment he just... Wowzers. I can't, ugh, I can't. Yeah, my, the one where I'm just like, what the hell are you even doing is when, like, he first gets the stuff in, in him, and he's just like, you know, no, I gotta get out of here. And then he turns around and leaves, and it's like, this is not a physical actor. This is not a physical comedian. It's debatable whether or not he's a comedian. <laughs> he had, like, a bit role in Trainwreck. He had, like, Doug. a couple seconds, and even though he's gonna do right. Doug, never had one lesson. <laughs> um, it... <laughs> yeah, he was okay in Ferris Bueller, mm. but okay. <laughs> I, everything else I don't get, um, but but he could be a nice guy. We don't know. Um, Rupert Everett is an awful Doctor Claw, but you can't blame him. What? I, I, nobody knew how funny. To do the Dr. funny Claw thing is when you say Rupert Everett is an awful Doctor Claw. That it, to me that just sounds like you just said the sky is blue. <laughs> it's just something that it's just, isn't that obvious? Yes, that's I mean, common yeah. knowledge. Rupert Everett is an awful <laughs> Doctor Claw. That a, anybody who cast him as Doctor Claw should have just said Rupert Everett is an awful. <laughs> I, why would you show Dr. Claw? That was the coolest thing about the show. You never got to see it. was always this metal hand, you know, and this, the, the, the damn cat. Surprisingly intimidating. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, a surprisingly intimidating villain. I mean, for well, just a all, hand. It's in all voice. in that voice. <laughs> yeah, that incredible voice. Um, so it's one of those things where it's like, so, but... So they took, yeah, they took the teeth out of that. Mm -hmm. um, so the villain is not intimidating, not scary. We know who he is. We see his face. Penny does nothing. Penny does nothing. It literally, every single rule you could violate about Inspector Gadget, they violated. Mm -hmm. Repeatedly. Uh, 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 like, just bad. Uh, and it's one of those things where it's like, you kind of get it that you need to make changes to a movie. Uh, you can't just have it be the exact source material. You gotta make changes no matter what. Whether it's, hey, it has to just work as a movie or it has to work for a new audience. Just, you have to do some changes. But it did work as no, a movie! No, but this is, again, this is at a time where it's like the changes, they kind of thought they could go so far with the changes and so, let's just try and hit the audience with what we think is popular and everything, that they changed so much and you just couldn't recognize and there was a time where now if you make any changes the internet's all over and stuff with the exception of Jen and the Holograms. That's the last one I saw where it's like this has nothing to do with the source material at all and it really suffered for it. This it really, really yeah, I guess, yeah. Nobody saw it. Inspector Gadget really was I guess the Gem of the Holograms of that, you know, year. Yeah, I mean just um, had nothing to do with it. Uh, so you're seeing less and less of it. Not saying they're making better movies necessarily but they're trying more and more to stick to the subject matter because they're realizing you can really piss off the fans now. It's not just the name. You have to have something that connects and to the And it was a nostalgia. good formula. It was for, literally you had proven through multiple seasons that kids would watch this thing with this formula. So what's the first thing you do? Hey, let's change the fucking formula. No! Fuck you! <laughs> Whose dumb idea was that? Well, what's so fascinating, the, the director of this, didn't he also do like... I want to say he did, like, you know, Beverly Hills Chihuahua and Smurfs and stuff like that, or Raja Gosnell oh, I can't, or whatever. I can't even, um, I can't even believe it. I think it. it's him. I, I, I can't 
totally put I together. can't blame the director, because whoever got chosen for this, they literally were just a goon for hire. But, you know... It, okay, it, even as a goon for hire, this is a horribly directed film. I, I just yeah. remember every single time yeah. they did some slapstick, it's always sound effect, someone slipping, and I always, every single time, there's some asshole going, huh? Like that, or huh? Yeah, right. And it was just so horrendous. There's one cool scene I remember where this guy's trying to run away, and the, his car, which can talk now, is there in disguise as a bush, and it's actually so good that it looks like the guy just trips and falls over nothing, but then the camera goes up and you see the car with his guys as a bush. That was a good joke. Well, and we're just so not understanding the formula and removing Penny from it completely just undermined the formula. That's what made it cool to kids was the kid yeah. was solving the mystery. And then you just remove that from it. It's, she's a completely perfunctory character. She has no point. And you know, maybe what you could have done is that you could have had something that was like the plot to Inspector Gadget. Some things I understand you can't do. I don't think you could do Brain. I have no idea how you would do that and make it work. Uh, it, it kind of ain't kind of, unless it was complete animated, you know, and Kids World stuff. But in live action, I don't know how you could do that. But you could still have the formula of Gadget gets a note from the Chief. You don't even have to explain where he came from, or maybe it can just be one line of dialogue, or, or maybe he is going to his past where well, he came from, possibly, or, but, and, and Penny's actually solving, you know, the crime and everything. Even but, if you do an origin story, you can totally do that. You don't need the chief with the message that blows up. Like, then do an origin story, but you still have Penny solve the mystery. You you can still have it, Gadget yeah, getting it, an assignment, but maybe the assignment ties into finding out yeah, about his it, origin it, and stuff. You don't show Dr. Claw. And even if you want to make him the hero, if you want to make Gadget the hero, you can still have Penny doing most of the work, and maybe Gadget is kind of stumbling onto it, or maybe Penny's showing him the way, but then maybe she gets caught, because that, that happened a lot in the show anyway, and Brain usually has to go and save her, but maybe Gadget is the one that actually goes and save her, and maybe he doesn't even know that it's his niece that he's saving, but he still does something that's a value. Point being, there's, there's so many other ways you could tie there's this There's ways in. you could have done it. Yeah. And it, I loved that show as a kid, and that was one of those moments where I'm like, wow, like, I would, no way would I have ever even have seen it, have we not? No. I, we I saw mean, the trailer, we I said, saw the trailer. Oh, God, I, no. I literally, like, turned and faced the direction of Hollywood and just went, <laughs> and... <laughs> It, it, it was um, very clear, yeah, that was Yeah, I loved that movie. show as a kid, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna watch Hollywood take a shit over something I really enjoyed as a kid, so... And then we had to review it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> and it was just as bad as you'd imagine. Now, the funny thing is people keep asking, it's like, what about the sequel? Have you seen the sequel? The sequel's so terrible, it's just... Oh, that's... I haven't seen this, but... I'm just gonna say this. No, the sequel's not good. I mean, in, in no universe is it, is it good. It's still not a great Inspector Gadget story. It, it is much... French Stewart and the style of comedy and everything, it is much closer in spirit to Inspector Gadget than the first movie is, though. I'm not saying it's good, but I actually think the sequel's better. I actually was watching the sequel because it was on TV one day, and I'm like, oh my god, okay, well, you already sat through the first one. Let's see a few minutes of this. I'm like... You know, this isn't good. It's aimed at five-year-olds, but I'm like, this is way closer in spirit to Inspector Gadget, and French Stewart is actually trying to fucking act like Inspector Gadget, which is something that Matthew Broderick didn't do. So, <laughs> like, seriously, there, there, nothing about Matthew Broderick. He's not even trying. He's just showed up, put the hat on. Wowzers. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? He said that, right? Wowzers? Wowzers? <laughs> I got a gun and get out of here! You th oh. So, so, so that's French, interesting. So yeah, the sequel so is Stewart, actually yeah. better. Not good, but better. I than honestly the think the sequel is better. I'm not going to say it's a good movie, but it, on the totem pole of suck between those two movies, <laughs> the sequel felt much more like an Inspector Gadget story. French Stewart was actually trying to sound like Inspector Gadget, and the movie's not great, but I'm like, you know what? Step up. I'll give it that. <laughs> uh, you're starting from such a low, low yeah. step, though. Uh, so, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a bad movie, and if you really want to see, in my opinion, just slapstick, like, what not to do with slapstick. <laughs> How not to direct yeah, the movie. Yeah, once in a while there's a good effect. Uh, I remember when his leg stretched out and he was running. That was a le and even kind of the shots like under the leg. Those were legitimately good effects. Mm -hmm. um, but and again, even the car camouflaging. I mean, that was obviously a practical effect. It was really there and stuff. So when they had the practical effects there, a lot of them weren't that bad. They were actually okay. But aside from that, yeah, can you think of 
anything? Nope. <laughs> I can't think of a thing. Nope. So, um, yeah, kind of... Kind of goes without saying, like, what our honest thoughts were, but, you know, I think it was fair to kind of say, you know, even though the cartoon was silly and meant for little kids and stuff like that, there were good elements to it and a good formula that the cartoon kind of deserves to be acknowledged. Took that, that's the biggest insult. The cartoon, as goofy as it was, took children seriously. They made a child the main character, they took its audience seriously, they wanted to give something for us kids that was kind of a spy thriller type thing, but still a lot of fun, and the movie did not. It was not only was just talking down to kids, the kids, it just was actively throwing shit in kids' faces. Well, you know, and Penny, the more I think about it, I mean, it was one of those things, because I just thought back to watching that show over and over in the formula, I just remember thinking, like, you know, I... When I was a kid, I always thought, she should get attention, she should get attention, but it felt like, that's cool, she's not looking for it, she just wants to see it, justice is done. I really <laughs> admired that as I, a little kid, like, I really admired that a lot. I'm not even sure it's entirely out of humility, it's just, she's, that's like her secret identity, she then puts a target on her face if, you know, mm. she comes out and is found out to be the one who solved all these No, but she's, she wants to see her uncle get the credit, she knows they're not gonna hire her on a force or anything like that, too. It's, you can tell there's always, like, this nice little smile, well, like, she you know, be, it's, it's, here's cool. The thing. it's cool, she wouldn't be able to solve anything if her uncle wasn't bumbling around, yeah. like, he's the distraction. Mm -hmm. So she, like, he's literally, the smoke she sneaks in like the little kid ninja that she is because he's bumbling around. So if she ever asked for the credit and got it, the jig is up. Yeah. She wouldn't be able to do any of this shit again. So I, you know, but that was the thing. She's like a, she's like a little mini superhero. And the movie just was like, fuck you. Yeah. Where? You get nothing, kids. You will eat our Hollywood shit and enjoy it. You know what I really like to see? I like to see a sequel to this Inspector Gadget movie that is all from Penny's point of view and where it looks like she's doing nothing. It shows like all the stuff she's actually doing the whole time. That would have been amazing. That would have been amazing. <laughs> and then you can have like the robo watch and the robo book and stuff I, like that. And maybe she great. has a robotic dog that actually serves as brain or something like that. <laughs> Brain's like an acronym. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, biologic, robotic, oh, animal, I have <laughs> not, intelligent. Yeah, the last thing I'll say, because I know people are gonna ask this in the comments i i saw there's if i'm right i think there's a new show on netflix a new inspector gadget show i have not seen it have you no okay so don't ask us about that we haven't seen it we don't know anything about it uh well, but it i did see it was cheap, there but mm, cgi i'm just yeah i well and <laughs> i'm like I don't know. Unless I hear like a lot of good stuff about it, I mean, I'm like, it's if people say no, it's amazing, watch it. But I, I mean, I get the feeling that's for like, little kids, and so is the original, I, and that's yeah. fine. I liked Inspector Gadget as a kid. I don't really watch Inspector Gadget yeah, I'm much not, nowadays. It's the rewatch value. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's meant for kids. Oh, I wonder what's gonna happen. Oh, Penny saved the day. I didn't see that coming. Oh, good brain job, helped Gadget. out. Oh, Gadget bumbling around like an idiot. Oh, and Claus says I'll get you next time, Gadget. Didn't see it. Yeah, like it. For, for a kid, it's fine. It's good messages yeah, it's like, and morals it's, and it's stuff. Like Scooby, but yeah. It's like Scooby-Doo. I don't watch classic episodes of Scooby-Doo that much nowadays. It's all the same. Like, yeah. But that's the fun of it as a kid. Now watch. I'll get all these people just like, How dare you not watch Scooby-Doo? The, the still... development of the gadget character has really come a long way. It's the new Avatar The Last Airbender. I do have everybody who's <laughs> like, You should see the new Scooby-Doo movies. I'm like, Eventually. <laughs> I'm not... The, Wait, you mean Scooby Doo Two or the? No, the yeah, there's a ones. whole bunch of animated films, and I guess apparently they're supposed oh, to be like where good. they meet wrestlers and stuff like that. Yeah, I is there one where they either. meet Kiss? <laughs> That'd be amazing. There was one. Somebody was showing me a clip, and it got all really meta and was breaking the fourth wall. And I'm like, okay, this is really amusing. I'm like, if they're doing this tongue in cheek, maybe I'll watch it. So, mm. but. But, yeah, but, but I don't watch classic episodes of Scooby-Doo. I feel like, yeah, that was meant for kids and, and you know, it's good I for kids. It's good yeah, deductive and, skills and everything. Yeah, yeah, and I enjoyed it, but I'm a grown adult, so I'm like, okay, well, it's always going to be the guy who's there for about three minutes of screen time, doesn't say much, and it's never the obviously ugly guy who seems mean and cranky. You know, it's like you figure out the formula right away. Yeah. Almost like, because it's meant for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think as an adult, you want stuff that's going to challenge you a little bit, and your time's more sensitive, so you want to find other stuff and that's going to And nothing against Scooby-Doo? Yeah, no, Inspector it's, Gadget, it's fine. They're, they're both fine. Yeah, I, it's just... They don't, 
they don't challenge me as much now that I'm like 36. So <laughs> just saying. You should probably be more concerned if you're 36 and you are watching Scooby Doo. <laughs> it's back to gadgets. And stuff, oh, you just probably pissed off. Probably. Most of the 36 year olds. How dare you! But it's it's fine if you watch it. Hey, great. I'm we sure watch fine. adult stuff. Gravity Falls. Yes, exactly. So um, yeah, that's about it. This movie sucks. Have a nice day. Fuck you, Hollywood. <laughs>